Hello everybody. As you all know, trees are important, but sometimes they die. So we here at Riptide Friends for Trees have decided to start a service. For every single dollar donated, we will stand next to a tree in its final moments and just talk to it. Sure, maybe not all trees are magical. Maybe they don't all understand us. But no matter, we hope to provide comfort in those final moments for a tree by asking it about its day as it gets chopped down. The more you donate, the more we'll do. For $5, we'll caress the tree. For 10, we'll give it a hug. Only you can help us cut down trees in a more sustainable and humane way. Thank you, and remember, trees are friends. Previously in the Black Sea, Following the pull of the black and gold compass, Chip is led into the red sack where he encounters the Klaus, who held an internally beating heart seemingly ripped out of an incomplete vessel. After asking some questions, the two come to an agreement. Chip keeps their meeting a secret, while Niklaus keeps the heart and temporarily freezes Captain Widow. Jay and Gillian feel the after effects of the miracle marbles that restored them and kept them alive in the previous battle. The Riptide Pirates unify, but suddenly during greetings with Green the Tabaxi, the great weeping cherry tree calls to Gillian. Everyone is led through a blighted orchard to the peak of what is traversable here on this side of the island. The base of the great tree and its lost sanctuary, where Green and Gillian connected to its consciousness, to hear its wisdom before it passed. Gillian perhaps surprisingly, sought knowledge of the prophecy, and the tree shared what it could recall of its origins. With this huge revelation of process, our captain's collected treasure finally arrived at the hideout to rest after a really, really long day. The following day, you spoke with Zami and Star, sent Queen and Griffin to help them clear the palace for a wedding, and took Igneous along to search for something left behind by Captain Rose. And so, the journey continues. You guys have just followed Igneous through uh, most of mostly retracing your steps back to the river, uh, and you have stopped at a stone bridge that crosses the river and goes a little steeper than it should, just to kind of fit uh, smaller boats underneath it. And it leads into a... Another blighted forest, but this time filled with these blackened and decayed and rotted mushrooms, some the size of normal trees, some just kind of collected together like mushroom bushes. And before you start to walk into it, Igneous kind of stops you guys after this interview you had with him and says, So, remind me, where are we going? You said you needed help finding something. Do you know where we're looking for? Just so I can kind of get an idea of what path we should take, because where we're going, every part of this island is dangerous. While he's thinking about where we're going, can I do a survival check on the mushrooms? Survival check? Sure. What are you trying to glean? I see if they're going to, like, nature. spit out fucking spores that'll corrupt us more. Roll nature instead. Nature? Okay. That works. 13. You get the idea that it's possible that due to the nature of this entire island, that while you see these these uh, some of these mushrooms go and release these gray clouded black uh, gas from its spores, this sort of um, smoke, I guess, you get the sense that yeah, it could possibly corrupt you. It could possibly be very dangerous. Yeah, it really just depends on how long you're going to travel. Have to travel through it. Uh, you also see that there are hollowed lurking around, but. Uh, they seem a bit slower, and some of them have these uh, mushrooms growing out of them. They remind you, with the 13, you don't remember exactly what these creatures are called from Jay's studies when she was younger. Um, but you know that there are such things as mushroom colony kinds of people that could possibly have been responsible for the reason why there are those subterranean digs and stuff. Um, on the other side of the island on this one. Fungos. Fungo guys. All I know is we're looking for something 
that was left uh, for me in the far eastern end of the country. It says on the note uh, to go and find it and that the legacy of the Black Rose will be eternal. And there was a flower too, if that helps. Yeah, and it, and it died. It died. So Ignis says, Right, well, the farthest side on the western part that we're coming from is, or was, the Great Tree, and on the opposite side, he sort of points, you can see, like, this colossal, ever-reaching uh, mountain, and, and from this, from this, where you guys are, this river, it's so far, it's, like, foggy almost, because of how, the distance, and, uh, he, and there's, there's, like, this collect, this cloud, this dark cloud collected at the top that kind of, like, rumbles very silently, in the, in the distance, and he says, that is the farthest we could possibly traverse, but no one has climbed that side of the mountain. I mean, it was, um, it's probably where we need to go because I, I was a bit younger, but it was erected unnaturally. I think it had something to do with the Black Rose Pirates. Well, nobody's climbed it yet. So looks like that's where we're headed. I probably have some like spare clothes in my in my backpack, right? Mm. I'd like to rip something to shreds to kind of like have something to wrap around our mouse and like I'm gonna pour. Would you let this help us with like checks we might have to do if I pour like a potion of healing on it or something to try to deal with the gaseous effects? You're like water or something, and then we'll also all crawl. That's what you're supposed to do in a fire. Um, yeah, you can do this and uh, uh, pull it, kind of pull this together for everyone. Super mm-hmm. smart. So just some bandages, right. kind of around the around the face. Yeah. So you ready to just walk through this? Um, I start like trying to like eat through it. I'm like, Jay, what are you? Why aren't you? Why aren't you gagging me? <laughs> I was about to say the mushroom forest is going to be the shortest path directly to where we want to go. We do have to pass through. Uh, a town, so there might be more hollowed, but uh, if we keep it quiet, keep it slow, we should be all right. The longest path would take days to travel the perimeter of the island. Oh, man. Would it be safer? Uh, days does not sound ideal to me. Um, safer does not sound ideal to me. Forget who I'm talking to, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if, by chance, there are uh, big mushroom creatures in there that have deceptively kind eyes? Because that could be a real pinch point for us. That could be really bad. It, it does. It does tend to actually. Kind yeah, of um, a huge like hang up in our in our we, adventures. We start to hesitate, and you know, it's just like benefit of the doubt. We we, we knew someone when I was younger. The Onua Mykonids, um were a friendly sort of bestial tribe here that uh, lived in this forest long before the Black Sea. At least from whatever scouting we've been able to accomplish most of them have not survived and he points towards some of the hollow that are just kind of like wandering that's why the only sort of safe hideout is on our side of the island would i know what a myconid is you can roll nature you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna do instead of rolling this because i'm not fucking good at nature i'm gonna say what's a myconid it's like a mushroom person (laughs) (laughs) oh okay (laughs) i just forgot the name so like you kind of just Jog my memory, thank you. Typically they lived underground, but um, uh, with the Black Sea and it sort of flooding through the tunnels underneath the river here, it it leaks into their uh, natural habitat. And I'd be surprised if we found any uh, ones that were dangerous. At least the ones at least here, and I'm, I'm sure it's not... He looks at you, Jay, looking like you know more than him. I'm sure it's not like this everywhere, but they weren't particularly dangerous, as many of the creatures were passive. The ones that I read of, yeah, they were Anyways, generally pretty pretty peaceful. Let's hope the corruption didn't get to them, and I'm going to start walking. Um, in. They definitely did. I mean, <laughs> I point at one, literally like it was sampling through the forest. Yeah. Oh, I meant like, I meant like instead of just making them a hollow, making them like a <laughs> beast. Yeah. Like a monster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to stealth. Yeah, me too. Okay, group stealth. All right, everybody roll stealth. All right, if everyone's stealthing, I go soft mode and my armor collapses. I'm going to (laughs) say... I'm going to say because Gillian just rolled a nat one. (laughs) That that it'll still be active up until you get through the forest. And then you'll have to recast it. Okay, so 11 for Gillian... Uh, 23 for me. Oh, new motherfucker! It flipped onto a natural 20, <laughs> slid across the screen, <laughs> and then, and then uh, fl- 
onto a two. That's like um, I hate that two is next to twenty. I still got a, I got a thirty three. Oh yeah, you're you're good. I, I rolled a two, by the way. I rolled a three and I got a one. Fortunately for Gillian, this was a group check, and the rest of you passed. Uh, uh, Igneous was close to twenty, but still below, and. That's all you guys needed. Just for me to know, how do they make me quieter? Moving all the leaves out of the way. <laughs> anything that I'm might. like a curling ball yeah, going down the ice rink. Like, it's like curling, <laughs> like sweeping everything out of the way in front of you. <laughs> Just spinning around. Whoa! You need me to carry you? Because you're really flimsy right now. And you're making I haven't, a lot of I noise. haven't made a single sound. So <laughs> you hear like 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 some some hollowed uh, their heads just kind of like creak over. He puts his hand on his fucking face. I think you stepped on something. Uh, everybody make a wisdom save. This isn't because I yelled, right? Is a bit? No, this is because you're walking okay. through the forest. So you get advantage right. with Jay's... Uh... Okay, so flat. You guys also get a plus four to this. Uh, I got a 22. I got an 18 and a natural 20. Whoa! I got a 21! Good news. Everybody passed! Yay! Whoa! <laughs> That's never happened before. As you're all making your way through the forest, you, in your mind, teleport. Pathically, you start to hear like soft whispers. Who are we? And you're trying to stay as quiet as possible. <laughs> Is someone blowing in my ear? <laughs> <laughs> um, Who did that? <laughs> it took me. And you can feel these 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 whispers trying to take hold, or not take hold, but damage your psyche, uh, and simultaneously take hold of it. And you hear. But nothing happens to any of you. You're not affected. You're not controlled. Or in the worst case, you don't go mad. And you make yourself, you make your way to the edge of this forage, forest. Um, not to Is where Is anyone ends. thinking more than usual? No. In fact, kind of less. I was just thinking, why can't we die? Which is like a weird thing for me. And I whispered it too. I was like whisper thinking it in my head. You follow Igneous through, um, hold on, let me just so easy he knows this island apparently like he like he memorized it long ago and he's just taking you through the shortest possible route through this forest and eventually you emerge not at the end of it but where it breaks into this another one of these sort of abandoned and run down towns there's like a little sign uh at the edge of the path that says portobello town uh it's surrounded by this uh forest of mushrooms and as you guys begin to walk through it um, Portobello is a mushroom? Yes, Gillian, it is. <laughs> mushroom sank all the way down into my bedroom when I was five years old, and it was labeled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you guys walk into this town, everybody make perception checks. 18. I got an 18. I got a 14. Chip, something catches your attention. It's a building that, um, while is, you, you know, rotted, has more structure than the rest of them where most of these buildings have either caved in in one way or another. Um, and there's a sign that just sort of swings even though there's no wind and it's a, uh, a ship, like a pirate ship. Looks like this is a, a bar that was themed after pirates um, called Shipwreck. It just sort of like swings. Jay and Gillian, the two of you spot further down inside the town, um, to the right of your, the path you're going on, a statue that is headless and a sign that says the prophetic hero. <sighs> Igneous uh, sees that the three of you sort of get intrigued by two separate things. He goes, oh, what's going on? We're just intrigued by two separate things. <laughs> I'll probably start walking over towards the bar. Um, I look back to Gillian. Gillian was scrambling over to this little statue. I'm gonna scramble, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stick with Gillian because he's fucked up. Oh yeah, I forgot. Ignis, can you stay with Chip yet? <laughs> hey, what, what are we doing? We'll meet back here in a second. Well, this is themed after the Black Rose. Clearly, this was their place. We had a good relationship with uh, um, pirates uh, in some parts of the island. Um, I don't think there's gonna be anything. I mean, this place is abandoned and forgotten. Well, the note said that whoever wrote it left something here for me. I mean, we still got ways to go before we get to that mountain, but hey, by all means. Maybe we'll find clues to where that thing they left is, right? 
something in here. I'll go in and look around. You push through uh, sort of like a tall saloon type door that is like slated and sort of uh, walk in and it is a empty, dusty, rectangular, small sort of bar with just chairs that have toppled over and been filled with these black cobwebs. Um, but as you sort of walk in, you hear like a, a squeaking of glass and see a figure behind the only counter in this interior just polishing a glass and it is covered in this like black acre strings and there's just two bright glows where his eyes are these kind of like ghostly bluish white glow it's like a ghost like a ghost? Yeah, but you have like a 33 in stealth, so it's not going to notice you until you <laughs> say something. Oh, okay. It's not, no, okay. not like a ghost. Right. It very much so looks like a hollowed thing is peeks behind you. Oh, I don't know if it's a good idea. I don't know. He starts like Beckham. Oh, we got we to gotta go in there, man. We got to do Look, I got to look around. Go ahead. Uh, if you're not going to interact with this figure on first step, go ahead and roll another stealth check and on to Phygnus as well. Uh, 23. You uh you try to sneak off stealthily, but Igneous is quite heavy, and he stabs on a place where it just like the wood is rotted too much. And as soon as he does, the figure, the hollowed, the bartender stops shining, and then just says, "On Olympi," and then keeps going. Do they always talk? Oh fuck if I know, I don't usually get a moment to try and talk to them, just slash them and then Oh we were just uh, we we were just leaving. Um and just starts to like back out the door. I and you're stuck there. <laughs> I don't I don't back out the door, I stand up. Um He like opens it again. What are you doing? I walk up to the bar, I lean over. I'd like a uh uh Sriracha Sunrise. Without any hiccups in this kind of flow sets the glass down after polishing it in front of you and then just like reaches under the bar and then pulls out this like really musky, dirty glass filled with <laughs> sloshing liquid, swishes it around, pulls out another ingredient, gets like a, a small uh, metal, though it's like really rusted, like cocktail shaker and then like pours something in, pours this liquid in, it steams as soon as it enters the cups. <laughs> Uh, and then he like shakes it and then does like a little fucking bartender trick, not even realizing there's no like emotion on the face. You can barely see any expressions, just like these glowing eyes. Uh, but masterfully pours the drink. But as it kind of pours in, it's red and black and, and just absolutely uh, appalling. And then it fills up the glass and he sets it back down and then puts two hands on the counter. This will be my last drink. I was only gonna drink this on a natural twenty. No way! Did you roll a natural? Did 20? you get a natural twenty? <laughs> oh, God. Bottoms up! <laughs> let's, let's, let's fucking go, dude! Oh, dude! I'll take a swing. All oh, right, God! <laughs> I'm already dead. Based, actually, true. <laughs> we are going to cut over to Jay and Gillian walking towards the statue as soon as as soon as Chip grabs this concoction, it goes, um, and we just cut over. The two of you walk to what looks like at first a statue from the distance, and then as you get closer, it's clearly a shrine, or at least it used to be. And it is a figure that has a lot of bits and broken pieces. Over time, whether it be just from decay or, or some kind of erosion here, just being exposed to these unnatural elements of the Black Sea, or some sort of encounter that possibly could have happened in this town long before you got here. The head is completely missing, but there are elements of this uh, uh, heavy plated armor. Uh, there's chips broken off where there's like a hole in the chest. There's like parts missing off on the abdomen. There are um, uh, not like a hole, but like a caved in divot where like, like pieces have been broken off. And it just is holding up a sword like a great sword with one hand towards the sky and it points and you look and you follow and it points at where the sun would be if the clouds weren't blocking it but you do see that sort of faint glow of the sun and there are like bowls that have rotted away or decayed and just a place where 
It looks like people believed in some prophetic hero in this island, and uh, this was the shrine they dedicated to them. I'm just like thinking of the one Futurama episode where he has the graving wife Samasui, and there's more words underneath like the big name prophetic hero and it gives us more context <laughs> you gotta wipe away the moss i just like i want to know I if dust, like there's i dust the off plaque. the plaque yeah the plaque is <laughs> there's more try and clean it up um there's a whole paragraph <laughs> jay roll a fucking fuck do you do to clean shit hang on i've got something sick i touch jay's shoulder and i say is it what it is <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is what it is. Okay, so go ahead and just roll survival. We'll just say that. 21. You scrub it away as much as you can, and there are like little tiny words, and you just have to work at it for a minute uh, while Gillian, you're just sort of staring up at the statue. And you do get a tiny bit more that was covered up. It says, To the future of the prophetic hero, our destiny, underneath it, it's like in quotes, our destiny is in your hands. There that huh. word is again. Yeah, but it seems. I wasn't here. I mean, are you sure it's meant to be you? A lot of cultures have different prophecies and destinies and heroes destined to do whatnot, and I'm sure a lot of them... You're right. Maybe it's vain of me to think, but um, even though there's no face... And it's broken and weathered. I, I feel like it is me, or a version of, of me that they were waiting for. Seems like that version might be completely... Oh, completely different than what I've grown up my whole life knowing. I'm going to sit down on like a... Is there anything to sit down on? Yeah, there's like uh, a few broken stone benches. Um, yeah, bench. That's not your fault, though, Gillian. I mean, it's not like you could have known. I guess not. You'd you just think, though, that if it was so... If it was so important, they would have remembered. Or I would have come with, like, maybe an instruction booklet? Or like a... QR code that you scan and you see what the prophecy is supposed to be or who I'm supposed to be. It would it would be lovely for maybe like some divine guidance, maybe because I don't know. Everything you got was just people that used you and set you up to go down a certain path without choice of your own. I guess if I could talk to anyone about this, it would be you. I guess we have that much in common. Um, I'm definitely not who my father wants me to be, that's for sure. I'm gonna have to confront that I'm not... I'm not what the elders want me to be. I might not even be what the undersea needs me to be. And I'm gonna pray that through this centuries-old game of telephone, the prophecy changed and that... and that they didn't change it, because that... Yeah. I think that you are exactly who you need to be. And whatever the prophecy may be, you're the one who has to enact it. So. Do you really mean that, Jay? Yeah, absolutely. Because what if, what if it's down to the wire and because I got the, the wrong version or got raised up wrong the the culmination of those experiences makes me do something that i that the that the real me i look up the statue wouldn't have or shouldn't have have done it's just it's all so confusing Gillian, we are just a product of our environment of our upbringing everything is if this prophecy is really destiny Gillian then when it comes time you will be exactly who you need to be to make the right choice and that's what I believe and if you ask me there's nobody I would trust more than you you are 
the strongest, kindest person I know. And if it comes down to a time where you have to make a choice, I know that you will make the choice you think is right. I hope you know the same goes to you in a heartbeat and as unsettling or exciting as it may be, Jay, I, I get this I get this feeling that you you have a part to play in it all too. And I I trust you with my life. Thank you. I um it's weird because I've also been getting that kind of feeling. I mean, I, there's a lot going on I don't really understand. Um, with my eye, uh, with apparently my, my blood is stronger or something. Listen, if you ask me, you're, you're like my adopted son sister. So <laughs> just, that's just an interesting way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just throwing it out there. I mean, your, your freaking eyes glowing with the power of the, <laughs> of the sun. You're having all these crazy dreams. I just... I don't know if I want to call it destiny because part of me just hopes that part of me just hopes you guys found me out of, out of sheer chance. And I think you're right. I think things have been bad and people have set up paths for us that we don't want to walk. Maybe in this sea of shit and death, we're still exactly where we need to be. Yeah. Yeah. It was Igneous backing out of that. Uh, <laughs> why, does he, why does he look so concerned about something? I don't know. There's like a strange blue glow in there, too. And Chips, Chips probably got it. I'm sure he'll do the yeah, smart thing. <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> you take one more glance at the statue, and despite the fact that it's terribly beat up, broken in so many places, mm -hmm. headless. Someone put it here to inspire hope, and here it still stands. I'm going to say, uh, until you long rest, you're blessed. Cool. All right. Thank you. That's both of us, right? Sure. I don't think it was, but it is. <laughs> Whatever it is now. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like looking at this statue wistfully. Jay pushes me out of the way and starts looking at it wistfully. <laughs> no, it's my turn. It's my turn to wistfully look at the statue. <laughs> uh, Chip, you hammer this back. Go ahead and make a con save. Can't get poisoned, Eight. at least. Dude, it stayed on like, what was it, fucking 17 or something? Like, it's just, it was on a better number and just slides across the screen. I'm not using fucking D&D Beyond anymore because it always like, Fucks with me. Two things. Until you long rest. <laughs> what are you about to do with me, man? Oh, is he blessed too? That's awesome. <laughs> That's so good. Why are you always giving me the short end of the stick? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I just, you just failed it. Um, Bro, you drank the sludge. <laughs> yeah, and I'm blaming other people for my problems. You swallow it, it goes pretty much right through you because it's your organs don't work. So I shit it out or piss it out? <laughs> I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's going to sit there and then bubble up in acid and it's not going to go anywhere. Oh, that sounds uncomfortable. Until you finish a, a, a long rest, your con's going to drop by three. Oh! Need a Tums. Need a Tums. Bro, you need a base. You need a base in there. You gotta, you gotta, you need to reach neutral pH. But you gain 25 temporary hit points. It like evens yeah. out. Right? It's actually like, yeah, really close to even to... Remind me later to put my constitution back. Because I got 13 now. As soon as you throw it back, slam it on the counter, you can tell that whatever you just drank probably would have really hurt somebody else. But you're dead. So, <laughs> it in fact, doesn't feel too bad. It doesn't feel like anything. You, if anything, feel more invigorated despite a little weaker. Uh, it's like a mix. Can I taste it? No. You, you can't. Awesome. There is, however, sensations of, like, burning from the sriracha that is, like, a million years old. <laughs> Just, like, not a million years old, but it's, like, you know, sriracha that's really gone bad. You can tell that your tongue is, like, sizzling, but it's, it's difficult to taste, you know? The bartender puts both hands on the counter as soon as you drink it and says, So how was it? You know, I kind of hoped that it tastes bad. Or like anything. You feel a bubbling though. Is that normal? Is that a normal feeling? You got a, you got any tums? It just 
um, stares blankly, and after a moment, you're like talking at it. No, it just says, "No one that any new word from travel." Nothing to report. Once you say that, the black, sort of like uh, you know the ichor and whatnot that kind of covers it up, begins to sort of unravel, and for a moment, you see like this ethereal. Uh, a person with like a, a you know square features a black beard uh really swivelly like a like a swoopy mustache and then uh they disappear and this bartender where they were standing it just kind of fades away and you kind of hear on the wind that it blows away with um glad you enjoyed Igneous, you can come in. He's gone. What? He just like faded into nothing. It's all right. Killed a poor bow. <laughs> I didn't kill him. So it's a come. We just talked. All right, what you find you're looking for? Or can we keep on a move? I'm holding the cup. Interested in a drink? There's like a little left at the bottom. No, uh, I think I'll pass. That looks like it was pulled from the wells of hell. Come on, just. Just give it a whip. Just give it a, whip. Just give it a smell. Um, oh, he like starts to back up. <laughs> Come on, you just want a little sip. I get up and start walking towards him with it. He grabs the handle of his sword. Don't play with me. Always with the violence. <laughs> it's actually like so aggro, dude. Like, if there's like something that goes slightly wrong, Igneous puts his hand on his sword. What do you? What do you think that it's gonna kill you? It's just a little. Hey. These little, these little pranks of yours, or I don't appreciate it, or I just went tough enough to survive this alone. Why does everybody try to kill me or challenge me to a battle every time I do a prank? I'm not going to kill you. No, what are you doing with the sword, man? I'm defending myself as you try to poison me as a joke. So there's, is there any other rooms in here? Just roll investigation. And at the same time, Magnus goes, fine, you know what? I'll sniff it. Give it here. I hand it to him. He throws it at you. I he, like, pours it out into your fucking face. <laughs> 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 hey, gotcha. All right, I'll wait for you outside. I'm like rolling on, <laughs> rolling on the ground, trying to make him think it like hurt me really bad. And once he walks out, I just like get up. I got a 17. You can see that the door to the other chamber is basically like caved in to the point where accessing it, there's just no rhyme or reason. On this kind of like glass that you're holding that Igneous throws uh, the liquid into you and then hands back, you can tell that uh, on the bottom of it are like runes that have been engraved into the glass. What the ass? But as far as for anything else in here, it's been so long, there's there's nothing left. I take the glass outside. All right, where are my magic people? What's going on? I right, got a rune. Looking at a rune, got Runes. a rune. Talking about a rune. Yo, did someone say a fucking rune? I fucking, I jump off the roof. <laughs> I fucking do a flip and I read the rune midair. Multiple, like, uh, hollowed, uh, covered in these mushrooms begin to... Oh my god, I'm actually to, stupid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> turn their attention to the center of the of this portobello town and they start to, like, walk in and stumble from the corners of the forest. <laughs> Because they start to uh, close on your location. Chip, that rune must have activated some kind of trap <laughs> and alerted all the enemies in a mile radius. Oh, you jumped off the fucking <laughs> roof. <laughs> Igneous goes, who the fuck out with a stove? And just starts to like run towards, <laughs> follow me. Uh, Jesus Christ. Everybody following Igneous or not? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we run along. Yeah, yeah, I'm following Igneous. Guys, I just have a loud character. <laughs> Roll stealth this time with disadvantage as you're actively running. <laughs> I wouldn't even want more. I can't get more disadvantage than this. I got a 17. Oh, I got really good, actually. Um, I got a 30. 36. Pretty proud of my 17, <laughs> though, while we're talking about it. Uh, Igneous got a 22. So, despite alerting every hollowed Myconid within the vicinity, you were managed to run, um, still going off his natural 20 survival check. He is able to lead you through the forest uh, after you guys have these brief kind of encounters in the Forgotten Town, Portobello, and eventually all of you make it to the edge of the beginnings of this mountain that reaches high, not as high, well, close to 
as high as you had to walk to get to the, uh, the, the, the base of that tree. It reaches really tall, and it seems to be made of, like, this clear, foggy ice that within its translucency is also, like, like dark and black. It's hard to see past it. So it's, like, dirty, dry ice. Um, and in this vicinity, you also are standing underneath that, that cloud that's collected at the peak. As you look up, you kind of hear this... Like a slow, like a low rumbling uh, at the top and black, ashy snow, if you can call it that, is, is constantly falling around this mountain, but there's no wind to like, at least at the moment, there's no wind that like pushes it in one direction or another. So it's just like this very still or vertical straight line of slow falling black ash and soot and it's not it's cold in this area but not in a way that makes you shiver or or freeze like a, a traditional winter but more in a way that makes your bones feel heavy and your body feel brittle and yeah you stand at the base it doesn't look like there's an easy path up this mountain but if you want to get to the farthest side as per the note climbing this seems the way to go and Ignea says all right who wants to go first? Well, let me see if I can uh, go up there and... Hey, Chip, before you do that, did somebody say rune? Oh, I passed him the cup. I want him to read... I just wanted him to read the rune. I wasn't just, like, going out to scream the word rune. Oh, yeah. And get high. I, I know, I know. I was. I wanted to mention it before we forgot about it forever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What languages does Gillian speak? Um... Normal <laughs> and prime and primordial. Okay, so you're not able to read the runes, but you can make an arcana check on the glass. Smell the glass, kind of like put my eye in the glass, lick the glass a lot. Oh, it's a language. It's a language. It's a language. Is I'll there... pass it back over to you after. Jay is sort of sizing up the mountain, I assume. Yeah, I'm looking at the mountain. I'm trying to think of like, does the ash look particularly harmful? To a, I assume it is because of ash and soot. Okay, so here's the thing if this was going to be harmful the way it's falling right now, you would think not because I would you would you'd be a feeling it already. It looks like soot. It feels like snow. Does that make sense? Okay, gotcha. It's just very cold. It's a weird cold. It's like dry cold for some reason. However, describe that. I got a thirteen on that arcana, by the way. It says I speak giant on my sheet, but I could have sworn I spoke celestial. It, it says it on your uh, sheet that you speak celestial, common giant, and thieves can't. Giant comes from Ireland, and celestial comes from who knows the where. Fuck where. Um, it kind of looks like a. Triangle. With 13, you can definitely tell that uh, the glass is magical. I've got it. Pass it back to Chip and look back up at the mountain. Okay, what is it? A magical rune. <laughs> Chip, you can read what's what's inscribed uh, on, on the bottom of the glass. You're so smart. It's because I'm a god at this shit. That's why. You think just because you have a 4,000 Duolingo Celestial streak, you're better than us? <laughs> yeah, Damn, I bro. get it. You speak Celestial. I mean... <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what it all you know sounds what? like to me. If, That's we, what all, if we go to the if we go to the celestial plane, you're not gonna know how to order fucking French fries. I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally. Be the one you I'm come the to. freaking chosen one. I'm gonna black. I'm gonna. Uh, they're gonna already know I wanted French fries from the day I was born. Counterpoint. All right, then let's go. Let's go right now. They'll have a statue of me, a decrepit statue of me with French fries, <laughs> and I'll show them. They'll give me French fries. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go to heaven. How do we get there? I have one idea. <laughs> <laughs> In Celestial, there is runes that read uh, some vague translation into the words ever full glass. It doesn't say that specifically because celestial is difficult. It sort of just rearranges for you in your mind, like uh, like we've always described, and then it turns itself into this common translation. And also vaguely, like I don't know what it's called, but whenever you do inscriptions and like engravings and designs on glass, there is in that little center, uh, hollowed part of the bottom of this like whiskey shaped glass, is a rose. Ever full glass, but it's empty. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, the name implies it'd be ever full. Well, have you tried filling it up? I look at it. I flip it upside down. I look at it. I look at Jay. I look at it. I hold it out at Jay. I don't know. 
Maybe it's like maybe you had to like. Can a, you figure okay. it out? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're like a baby, dude. <laughs> well, she just has a higher arcana, so she could she could figure out how. When you get into a safer position, right now you're sort of in the middle of a dangerous area. I'm gonna climb the mountain, and I'm gonna use the grappling hook to do so, and then I'm gonna use ropes, secure it, and make it easier for others to get up. Go ahead and roll athletics. Okay, that's an eight. Basically, as you're trying to throw and get purchase with the with a grappling hook to get it to hook onto something to help you climb, it just keeps thing, f- sliding off this icy mountain. Well, it was a good idea, but um, yeah, I mean that could have definitely worked. Second idea, Jay, can you fly? I don't know if it's smart to fly with all this ash and soot. And then you have to like carry all of us. I don't. Can you carry? Me? I mean, I'm... well, it's just you can go up there and find a place to secure this so we can climb up. True. What animal? Can climb, monkey. We're talking like a goat, like a goat, <laughs> like sleek cliffs. We're talking like Jesus. mountain goat. Yes, mountain goat. These words in my head—they're words. They don't make sense to me, but maybe they'll make sense to him. And I put my hands on the ground and I start drawing a magic circle with fu- in the in the fucking black uh, snow, and I start casting fine steed and it says <laughs> you can choose a warhorse pony camel elk or mastiff your gm might allow other animals to be summoned as steeds so i want to try and summon puddle as a mountain goat that we can <laughs> ride to the top they're great they're great climbers i can say because of the, the the size of a mountain goat it will be able to carry one person or we could like i could do ship's plan and gillian since you're fucked up you can take the goat uh, I if the goat's just for me, I feel weird about the goat. I mean, like I feel like the goats. I want the goat to be well, you're helpful. already making the goat. You gotta, you I'm gotta mid, fall through I'm the goat. I'm mid goat. I mean, I've already got two hooves crafted. There is the problem of now we have the goat. Now we have to get the goat up there. What if the goat can't actually climb? That is a problem. That is a problem. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean? What if the goat? What, are you saying? It's you, a, are you saying if it's a, like a lame goat? Well, well, if you don't know what a mountain goat the is, the goat's gonna and be you're fun. making it. How are you gonna make it? What are you doing? What are you doing? What I'm are you making doing? a mountain goat! Okay. I'm making a mountain goat and I want Chip to tell me what a mountain goat is while I make the mountain goat to make sure that it's a mountain goat that can climb! It has horns. Um, It's kind of fluffy, kind of? Chip, roll a nature check, Chip. That's how accurate you get with your fucking goat. We're gonna make a fucking monster if you fail this, Chip, please! Eleven. Oh, oh lord. You were coming to describe a goat, for sure. A regular goat. Okay. <laughs> It's got it's got horns that okay. kind of spiral up. Okay. Um. What was horns? All right, I've seen those. Yeah, there's horns. It has a head. How many legs? How many legs? Two legs? Four legs. It's definitely four got four le- okay, legs. Okay, how big? Because we need it to be sort of big, right? They're big. They're really yeah. They're big. They're massive. They're huge. They're huge. They have horns. They have four legs. This is gonna look like like a British artist's like drawing of a tiger. You know what I mean? Where like it just looks like a fucked up dog. <laughs> that is, <laughs> this is gonna I, look. So- I did forget the last leg, right? That's the jumping leg. That one's like comes right in the center. That's got to be the biggest one because that's where the force is coming from. Yeah, it's the biggest like. <laughs> okay, so after creating this like spore creature doomed to die, um, I guess, I think I'm relying on the DM to tell me what so... this is going to be. <laughs> 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 well, I realized halfway through it'd be funnier if I just I gave you something wrong. You just you fucked it. Gillian finishes with Chip's help and description help in quotes gillian finishes drawing the mountain goat in quotes <laughs> and what begins to rise out of the dirty fucking moisture that is inside this muddy uh, uh ground that uh, muddy and cracked ground it begins to form itself and you see uh the size of a pony, uh, the fur of a, of a fluffy white cat, dirted and matted in some areas, tripping and moist because of Gillian's spell. Uh, the face of a goat with these big swirling uh, mountain goat horns, and it has four legs and then one that comes out the middle of the stomach, and it forms itself, looks at, looks at all of you and goes, Bleh. This shouldn't exist. I, 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 I hold my sword over its head and I get ready to execute it. <laughs> it looks at you and speaks because it can speak to Gillian and it goes, Yay! Oh, uh, hey, hello, little one. 
So you are a mountain goat. Oh, big brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God, guys, it's, I'm attached to it now. I'm attached to it. Gilly mentioned that the middle leg would be longer than the rest of them. <laughs> well, because it's so the jumping that, leg. Because it's the jumping leg. <laughs> Good question. Is this thing standing at an angle on its back legs with its front legs just kind of hanging around? or on its front legs with its back legs hanging? As you're wondering that, you see as it's created, it's sort of off balance, so it just stands <laughs> up on its back legs. Oh, um, and, and it's sitting <laughs> out? <laughs> And the middle one, the middle one stays on the ground like a tripod situation. Oh my god. Your wish, my command. It says to Gillian. Hmm? And to you guys, you just hear, eh. Who would like to ride the goat first? Igneous screams. I don't know. You brought this into the world, and you should ride it. I can fly. I can just fly. It's okay. I don't need to. Carry this grapple up there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna climb. Um, I, I. But good luck, Gillian. <laughs> Hello, little one. <laughs> I start to mount the soggy, five-legged, bipedal erect goat. <laughs> I'll cast fly and, and, like, put the rope. Wait, Jay, could you have casted that on anyone? No, just myself. Ready to go. Uh, ready as ever. Yippee. I, I get so low and I grab the fur and, and, and I get so low and I say, fly like the wind. Call me by my name. And uh, just to remind me, not that I've forgotten. No, but, you you give it a name. It's your Steve. Oh, no, I want it to name itself. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, there's, a, there's a power dynamic going on here. I, what is your name, little one? Lulu C. That's a beautiful name. Right, Lucy. <laughs> Man. Right. Just sort of, it's like climb, jumps on the ice mountain. It's like, it's like uh, a fucking bloodborne creature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it really fucking is. Its hooves are especially pointed. Uh, and with this fifth leg, I'm going to say that you'll still roll the athletic checks. You'll get advantage on athletic checks. Does that mean I just have uh, flat? So. Because I have disadvantage. Uh, no, the goat. The goat has advantage. You're not. Ro you're rolling for the goat. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm rolling for the goat. Got who, it, by got the it. way, has a plus two. So I think is actually worse than Gillian. But you do have advantage. <laughs> I should have just summoned and... fucking horse. <laughs> 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 yeah, for real. Um, kidding me, dude. Yeah, it's not. It's not a very. It's oh, not a very strong fuck creature. Off. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Gandhi. And you know what? I'm a busy guy. I wake up in the morning, and you know what? I woke up, right? And that's a lot. So I don't really have time to think about things like. What am I gonna eat for dinner? Thankfully, thanks to HelloFresh, I can spend less time thinking about what I'm gonna eat for dinner and instead focus on the important things. Like why do the, what do the, yeah. I'm no stranger to a packed schedule. So after sitting on a couch for 15 hours a day, it's nice to know that I have the ingredients ready for me in my fridge to make an absolutely delicious meal. And thankfully, no amount of laziness prevents me from doing it. Most of the time I'm sitting down and eating faster than I would be if I ordered food. And I didn't even have to go to the grocery store for it. So you know, don't be lazy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50JRWI and use code 50JRWI for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, that was HelloFresh.com slash 50JRWI and use code 50JRWI for 50% off plus free shipping. And you too can have a delicious, healthy, and easy to prepare meal right in your fridge anytime. No thoughts required. So thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring us, America's number one home meal kit. Okay, so... Jay, go ahead and roll survival check. Uh, you, how far do you fly up and around? So I would only be able to go like 50 feet at a time, basically, because that's the length of the rope. Yeah, okay, it's still gonna take some time then. So we'll just say, Jay, since you can fly, you'll make survival checks that will help or hinder, not hinder necessarily, but it will help if you're able to to pass the DC, it'll help Chip and Ignis climb. Um, Natural one. Uh, disadvantage <laughs> is really, really a bitch. Oh, <laughs> fuck, bro. Yeah. Uh, so it's eight total, if that matters. Go ahead and roll athletics as the goat. And then Chip, you'll roll athletics. Uh, and Ignis will roll athletics as well, climbing the rope. Okay. My goat athletics is a 27. Or, or. Oh, guys. You should have. I hate to say it. You should have gotten on the goat. Should have taken the goat. <laughs> you, want to, you want me to get on the goat? You want me to get on the goat? Ride, Lucy. <laughs> Jake, you, you tie it pretty 
well, uh, like as you were taught. Uh, and you just sort of back away uh, to give Chip the go ahead and notice that both Chip and Igneous are already climbing oh, before wait, you've even secured wait, it. One at a time. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> and then it, in a flash, it sort of unravels and then <laughs> breaks off the stone that you put it on. And you start, you swoop down flying to try and catch it. But uh, uh, Chip and Igneous both almost slip and have to catch themselves on, on some part of the uh uh the mountain chip go ahead and roll a d6 six so go ahead and roll a d20 seven okay now roll a d4 dude what the fuck i don't know what's going on right now and i'm worried two <laughs> it just rolled like the worst things oh, back to back to back oh good oh <laughs> no what igneous you watch as he just sort of uh uh as soon as he begins to fall takes a sword out, slams it into the ice, and then hangs on it. Uh, but it sort of it overextends his his, his, his shoulder, and he goes, uh, uh, and then just kind of hangs there for a moment. And then Chip, as you slip, you can't find anything to grab on immediately. And this like rubble or whatever, this black soot uh, mixed with the rubble falling as the hook falls, all begins to fall into your face and enter your eyes, which are already sort of everything about your body. There's nothing to really expunge shit as it, it falls into your your your, your orifices mm, no tears no tear ducts and you manage to catch yourself but uh for two hours you will have disadvantage on perception and attack rolls from having this uh, uh blurry division disadvantage on perception and attack rolls <laughs> yeah oh my fucking god killian but you're monstrous mountain goat is just hopping from like little like you can't see it with you guys can't really see it but like there's these slight inclines that the goat just kind of hops from to and fro finding their 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 the surface parts of the surface master are climbing this icy mountain but we have another round of this so go ahead and it's a it's a tall climb you've got just you guys have all so gotten, unsettled by this <laughs> you guys have um, all made it we'll say about like we'll say 30 to 50 feet with a rope but since they failed we'll say it's only 30 because they're not even supposed to climb that much but we're going like multiple rounds at a time and rolling ones for each round. goat athletics is a 24 here's my disadvantage survival oh thank god okay 18 this time. Oh, Chip! Chip! You have to stop, bro. What did you roll? What did you roll? What did you roll? I rolled another two! <laughs> That's four! Again! Does he get anything from my 18 survival check? The DC lowers a lot, but he still uh -oh. rolled so low. Just so you guys know, climbing the mountain is a high DC. It's very difficult. It's made of ice. The mountain goat is getting it because they're getting above the DC every time so far. Uh, you're the rope when you succeed the survival dc which is about moderate difficulty um the dc significantly lowers like a lot chips still rolled below like a five which is the e, like there's no way to pass should have gotten on my spider i mean goat i mean i don't know uh ignis continues to climb chip go ahead once more roll a d6 Two. <laughs> Once more. You're actually I think you're actually kinda lucky. Let me just see. You just keep getting ash shot into your eyes. <laughs> actually, yeah, no, it's the same exact thing happens. She keeps falling into your eyes. <laughs> you guys just hear me screaming about my eyes. At, at the moment, right now, um, we'll say until you get up the mountain, you are actually blinded. Like it's not partially, it's not blurry vision, you're full on blinded. So you will automatically fail anything that requires sight. Uh, and creatures uh, attacks against you will have advantage. So like climbing a mountain. I mean, he has to, he's holding onto the rope. Like he's not falling or anything. Oh God, he's holding onto oh the rope. But now he's just blinded. holding on the rope, getting dragged through <laughs> like fucking ice and ash and all this shit. <laughs> you guys kind of have to stop. Uh, at certain points so that Jay can move the rope and stuff. Uh, but your like, eyes are like fully shut. You're really feeling the effects of being undead. You can't get this fucking grime and dirt and soot out of your, or, or soot snow out of your, your eyes. And it is just, you're completely blinded at the moment. Does anybody have any eye drops? You're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> Fuck. We're almost there. Lucius started like frothing. Maybe that could, I'd rather be blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to see this. And you're just watching uh, Lucy just <laughs> Like, actually, now at some point, uh, Lucy starts to spider climb and this weird, like, <laughs> angular. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Big bro, gonna get bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> he starts to, uh, to, to climb like, up. fucking joy 
find Sir Lick real hiding. So glad to have you, little sister. Holy shit, I'm actually, this is so found family. Um, <laughs> Once again, we are now about 100 feet up. You guys look down, you see this fall is now fatal. It looks like it will it will, it will hurt a lot if you fall. Um, I guess now would be a good a time as any. I'm going to cast Death Ward. I'm going to twin spell it. Is Jay, can I uh, touch Jay from where I am right now? If you called me up, I no? could fly to you and then fly back. In that case, um, I'm going to twin spell Death Ward on me and on Jay. So now that just means if you would drop to zero hit points, uh, you instead drop to one. Why cast it on the one who can fly? And I'm go <laughs> hang on, hang on. I'm going to use the helping hands and give it to Chip as well. It's because it's touch, so I can't. I have to touch first and then use the range on it. It's not like I can't die. I can die more, right? I mean, I guess I can fully die. Oh, but like you're right. Okay, I give it to Igneous instead. <laughs> yeah, Chip, do you? I have a spell that can keep you from dying, but I mean, I guess you don't have much to worry about there. So, boom, bam, bop. All right, me, Jay, Igneous. Now, if we fall, um. We'll just get up again. Appreciate you. And I'll just, uh... Listen, I'll Chip, just... um... Just hang in there. We'll see you away. Um, and I think also with how fine Steed is, I think Lucy also gets Death Ward. Not that it'll matter too much, but yay. <laughs> I am immortal. We can get into that at the top. As as they say that, you start to see like like wispy sh like shadows kind of appear uh, beneath their, their hooves. And then it goes away for a second. <laughs> Love you, little sister. Um, I uh, I restrain from using divine sense because I'm scared of what I'd find. Um, uh, once more, athletics goat, survival J, athletics chip. Okay, I got a 17. Oh, 15. Lucy got a 28. Uh, Ignis got a 17. How close are we getting to the top now? I look up uh, and uh, I, I, I look down at first and I see all of the legs spidering out, like fucking shooting out and then look up quickly so I don't have to. You're coming up on like what is like a cliff? Checkpoint. That you'll be able to kind of rest at. Yeah, like that. Um, so you have about a hundred more feet. We'll see two more rounds. We're almost there. We can rest here if you'd like, or we can just keep going. No, I'm doing great. I think we should rest for a little bit. I was sarcasm. <laughs> I can't see. Sorry, it's hard for me to tell what's happening with your face when you're bouncing off the rocks like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you're like scaling a fucking building right now. You've gotten pretty high up. Okay, so it's not, it's not terribly tall yet. We're we'll going to do the same rolls. Whoa, 21. Jay got a 16. Uh, Lucy got a 21. Hell yeah. Once again, all all continuing up. Okay, you guys keep climbing again one more time. Okay, I'm worried. We're making a lot of rolls here. I know. <laughs> it's your destiny, Lucy, to climb this freaking mountain. This one is a 13. I have a plus two. I'm worried D&D Beyond's going to fuck me if I do this, so I'm going to roll it here. Seven. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Lucy got a seven too. A 27! <laughs> Let's go! Jay, you tie the, uh, this break point is, this clip is pretty massive. It, like it spans like a long way, uh, you know, um, yeah. maybe like a hundred to, to, or so feet, uh, until you get to another part of the mountain that you have to start climbing again. Um, and you tie as best you can this on the top here and even put your foot on it. But both Ignis and Chip, just from the length of this climb, oh, no. fail their, their check. So go ahead and roll a d6, Chip. Four. Chip roll four. You see Igneous is almost up, slips for a second, tries to catch uh, a, a little groove with his foot. His foot uh, twists and he falls a little more, grabs onto the rope, and then Jay, in that moment, you have to like really grab the rope. Uh, Gillian and the Mountain Goat as well to keep the rope from completely slipping. Shit. Chip, you don't fall but from the same sort of uh, complications of climbing and being blind and and just the overall exhaustion of this uh, and the nearly like <laughs> near near death moment of, of igneous who has gone ahead of you uh, uh f nearly falling and and the robe almost falling uh you're essentially going to have disadvantage on saving throws <laughs> there's another one minus Kidding. three constitution <laughs> disadvantage on perception disadvantage on attacks disadvantage on saving throws we have fought 
fucking world ending beats and come out better. We're climbing a mountain and drinking stuff. Can I just deposit one thing? Deposit it. You should have gotten on the fucking goat. I know I should have gotten on the goddamn goat, man. You think I don't regret every day not getting on that goat? <laughs> Lucy and Gillian get up effortlessly, effortlessly and eventually uh, Gillian and Jay, you both pull Igneous and Chip up and you have this sort of uh, cliffside platform, I guess, to walk across before you start climbing again. How much higher do you, does it look like? Like how many turns, I guess? Like you're you're away you're a while from the top of the mountain. <laughs> Are we gonna have to roll every single time <laughs> for every fifty feet? I get up there to this point and Chip looks like a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Chip! No, Lucy, Lucy, lick him, lick him. That's all that always works in the do movies. Not lick me! Oh, he's fine. These are just my bones. Everything else has been scraped away. Should they be sticking out like that? In that order? I have a malformation. It's nothing to worry about. Lucy's gonna lick you anyways. It's it's a really gross, long sandpaper tongue. Oh, sandpaper tongue? And it's uh, long too. It's like a goat tongue. Oh, gross. Surpr honestly surprised it wasn't forked. So, Chip, you're looking pretty fucked up. What makes you say that? You just... <laughs> It, it's, you know, um, <laughs> if you guys want me, Lucy can go on ahead. <laughs> Igneous goes, <sighs> if the Black Rose left you something here, they sure made it impossible to get to. I told you no one has ever climbed this fucking mountain. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm having a pretty good time riding first class. <laughs> yeah, I don't see why anybody wouldn't climb this mountain. And shit, Lucy's even got cup holders. What? <laughs> <laughs> Not little. I mean, like, there's little, pe you know, the fur the, the sort horns, of carved it up. The horns spiral at the top to, like, have little... <laughs> <laughs> I, I fuck over and put the cup in it. Big bro, is this friend... Or foe. Um, Chip, Lucy's asking if your friend or foe. What should I tell her? They're like sniffing Chip. Kill. Oh, it's probably because of your, you know. Whatever keeps them from licking me. Kill. It's okay. It's okay. Wait, what? Lucy, what was that? Kill. Kill. Well, Question mark. That's, that's strange, guys. I, Usually the fine steed spell is um Everyone else very peaceful. Um, <laughs> no, Lucy, th this is a friend. I know he might have that pungent odor of the unholy ones that we want to vanquish back into their derelict howls. Um, but he's 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 good. Don't worry. Friend. Chip, how bad do you need the goat right now? Oh, I'm fine. Still very much a skeleton. Okay, like, I have the size coin out. I put it away. All right. But if you, but I mean, if if you had a, an idea. You know, an idea for what? To get me up there. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. I flip the coin. Um, I don't actually have a coin, so I'm just gonna roll a d4. One to two is heads and big, and three to four is fuck and small. One! Lucy's huge! <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Lucy will go from pony size to whatever size is one bigger, right? Yeah, she doubles in all dimensions. And her weight is multiplied by eight. So from medium to large. And she has advantage on strength checks and saves, which she already had. Um, so cool. We can put two people on Lucy now. I guess Chip. I'm on it. Um, I got the endurance. I'll keep climbing. All good. Um, you know, I can also just stay. No, I'll go with you. I'll go. I have to lead you there just in case. You know, all right, let's just, um, I'll climb. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, right. We forgot to install a trunk when we were summoning Lucy. Otherwise, I'd let you hop in. Um, no. Oh, good. Oh, Chip, don't forget your seatbelt. Right. I reach over and grab the fur. Oh, no, you I don't need like to do that. Her fur naturally wraps around and encases you when you sit on her. It does what? And I sink down. <laughs> <laughs> With Chip and Gillian on top of the large Lucy, Jay's in the air walking next to them. What, what's she um, doing? Jay would still be flying. Um... I think with just you're one flying, person. Are you hovering just above them? Yeah, basically. Jay uh, hovers uh, next to you guys as you guys sort of walk through. And you notice that the as you get higher, the snow gets denser and, and it makes things... It, it's, it obscures your vision to some degree now that you're this high up. And uh, Igneous is just kind of like trugging through this black snow. Make sure it doesn't get in your eyes. As you guys are walking across this plane, uh, this cliffside plane, go ahead and roll... Everyone roll perception. Except me. 23. <laughs> I got a natural one, so I got a two. Can I roll for Lucy? 
it's okay if you say no, Charlie. You can't um, roll for Lucy. Yeah, you can roll Lucy's perception. Let's go. She has zero perception, guys. Natural 20. <laughs> Wait, it was actually fucking what the fuck? <laughs> I, I swear to God, I said that before. I did. Yeah, it's a natural 20. Sorry. Lucy rolled a natural 20? <laughs> yeah, I said it is a bit, and then it just... And it happened. It's there. The, the history <laughs> just, is there. It's just, just like there. It just happened. Just... I'm stressed. I feel like Lucy's going to sprout new eyes. Huh? The chances for that to happen here are so astronomically low, right? Because it's like a, it's, it's, it's yeah. a 1 in 20 chance. But also... To, for it to be the no, one he you, called yeah. before to he be, rolled to it. to call it. No, you guys don't understand behind the screen how upsetting this is. But anyways, you begin to walk. And as you guys, you know, Jay's floating up. And, and you guys are, you know, as I described, in this sort of group walking, you get about halfway, midway into, into the center of this sort of uh, uh, cliffside platform. And suddenly, you hear, Bleh! And Lucy stops and stomps on the ground multiple times, and you you start to hear this cracking. And, a, and with, little sister, what are you doing? It catches your attention. There's a massage mode. They're not, they're, it catches your attention, Gillian, but not to the point where you realize what is happening before it happens. Is boom. This, this sudden burst through the ground beneath you uh, as as the ground begins to. Sp- Split uh, and crack until only until until Gillian and Chip and, and Lucy are standing atop this snow-covered, uh, icy, small platform, uh, uh, and and Igneous is on his own platform. And Jay, from the top, you suddenly get uh, almost blown back from the sudden explosion beneath as these. <laughs> Four small ships rise from the ground. What the fuck? And begin to circle and, and sail on this this sort of like icy cliffside lake that was frozen, uh, uh, and it suddenly just exploded all at once. Uh, and circles Killian, Chip, and and Igneous, and and uh, uh, you basically are all in the center of this. <laughs> and I need all of you to roll initiative. Everyone is surprised except for Lucy. Fuck me. <laughs> so Lucy gets to act first round. Fuck, fuck Lucy. Uh, I got a natural one, so that's a negative one. So I will not be playing in this <laughs> fight. Uh, it all balances out, huh? Just tell me your guys' initiative real quick. Mine was seven. 25. So Chip isn't surprised. That's the big thing here. Chip isn't surprised. He can't be his sword. Yeah, sorry, Chip. I think I'm going to nerf your sword a little bit. Why? Because everyone in 30 feet is a really big range. And you're, you're not surprised. Everybody else is. We're, we're not affected by your sword. That's an understandable change because it just makes you not able to use surprise ever on anyone. Yeah, and this definitely was an encounter that is so, like, pff, you know, it's a big ambush. And we're all just like, yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, I mean, Chip's, <laughs> Chip's sword told me this was going to happen like yesterday. So, like, so I stand corrected. Everyone but Lucy and Chip. Chip, as this sort of explosion happens beneath you, you hear that sort of uh, ring in your ear and the hum of one of your blades uh, let you know that danger is here and you're going to be able to act on this round. Am I still blind? <laughs> it's definitely not been two hours. Uh, yes. Rats. Let's go. What do we even... Let's just give up, man. Let's just give them what they want. What do they want? Money? <laughs> money? We got money. I'd like to use my turn to say you win. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you're blind. Wait, that makes things really complicated. Hold on. Holy shit. Okay, well, this will be interesting. So, top of the round, you all hear... Again, everyone's vision is pretty obscured by this heavy snowfall that now is like almost kind of swirling, uh, matching the cadence of the... Uh, the the ships that are the small ships that are sailing around all of you, and it is swirling to the point where it's it's becoming almost like a a subtle tornado at first until you hear and bright lights through this uh, a snowy fog on top of each of the ships begin to glow and cackle, and then you start seeing streaks of this uh, arcane energy begin to ramp up the a swirl, the, the, the speed of the swirling snow. And I need everybody around here to make a strength saving throw. Oh, shit. So if we're on loose, should I just have all of us do one? Yep. Oh, I have disadvantage too. Okay, yeah. Oh no. Okay, I still got a, I still got a seventeen. I got a thirteen. Lucy got a 
Motherfucking not a 25. She got a 20. I'm going to use Flash of Genius, and I'm going to think back to, to a time on the, on the ship uh, with Chip. <sighs> we go back to a moment on the ship. Okay, <laughs> Chip, I need you to flip the wind's coin, okay? I'm going to try to stay up here. Why? I don't know. I want to see if I can stay up through the wind. Oh, this is a yeah, cool just coin. Flip it. What's this made of? <laughs> I put it on my last start biting it. It's like, I don't know, copper? All right, here we go. I flip it. I don't know, probably updraft, downdraft. <laughs> Tries to bring me down to the yeah, coin. The, the, the coin lands and this big burst of fucking wind shoots up uh, and you are like blown upwards. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just trying to like... Practicing your, your flying in the heavy winds, got it. Flashback forward, I guess. And then I use Favored by the Gods and I say, this reminds me of something. <laughs> and I flash, flash back to which Jay was using the wind's coin and being blown up in we the air. We go right back into that flashback. And I walk out and oh, I no, say, Gil who Gilead, wants cookies? No! <laughs> Wait, what's that? Jay, look out! I see the coin, I see it's causing her distress, and I scramble over to it, and I and I try and I eat it because I'm confused and it's hurting my friend, and I start choking on the coin, and I start <laughs> I start giving him the Heimlich. I start <laughs> starts giving me the Heimlich, and all of a sudden a beam of light, divine inspiration flies down and spit it out, down and <laughs> spit, it out. <laughs> spit it out across the deck, and I flash back. Why did I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I actually add eight to my, oh my fucking God. Save! Holy fuck! So mine's a um, that brings now. me from a yeah, and I go from a thirteen to a twenty-one. Chip, what was your strength save? Seventeen. You're you're able to keep yourself uh, uh, on top of Lucy as this this wind this fucking tornado begins to kick up. Jay, what was your strength save? Seventeen. Uh, once again, you're able to keep stable thanks to your flash of genius inside the air. You're not thrown or or, or into like the the water or into any of the ob obstacles. Uh, Gilliam. It would be a 21, but I forgot we also have Bless. It's a 25. This wind feels like a slight breeze. You are clutching uh, <laughs> Lucy. And oh, yeah. what was Lucy's strength save? Lucy got a 21. Okay. Everybody is all good with this uh, top of the round wind tornado. It once again begins to kind of slow down afterwards. And then you hear chants from each of the ships circling you. You hear boom. And then you hear another one off the other side in a different ship. Bum, 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 And then again, another one. Bum. And then another one on a different ship. Bum, 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 bum. And then again, bum. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, and you begin to start to hear these like acapella chants around you. Um, you can't see. You can only see like maybe the slight glow of some eyes that are on. There's like one of them on each of the ships. And <laughs> Chip, you speak giant? Yeah. The rest of you start to hear like a song. Boom! Holy shit, is this Imagine Dragons? You hear, in Giant, you hear, Sailing on the Midnight Rose! And they are singing this fucking shanty as they circle you guys. Uh, and then they take their turn, and you guys hear, phew, 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 uh, as these fucking ice spears go shooting towards uh, each of you. Let me go ahead and roll here. The first one on Gillian doesn't hit, and then Chip doesn't hit. That's a 19, natural 19 on Jay. That hits. They have advantage to hit me. Oh, they do? Okay, let me roll again. Okay, that is a, your AC 17. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to hit, it doesn't hit, I guess, Lucy. You guys get kind of all together. So it's going to be one on Chip and one on Jay. Jay takes 16 points of piercing damage and Chip takes 14 points of piercing damage. Once again, both of you um, make a strength save. Natural 20. Natural 20. What? Oh! Whoa! <laughs> wait, do I, you have disadvantage, right? I have disadvantage. Natural one. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Damn, are you serious? Are you fucking out? Oh, Jesus, man. I wish I was making this up. I'm not. What the fuck, dude? Holy shit. I don't, know. I don't know if I like the energy you're bringing into the studio today, man. It's like you're failing a lot, and it's making me feel like a failure. <laughs> I don't really want to hang out with you anymore. No, I get that. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Chip, you hear 
in Giant, which you've only ever heard and learned from Arlen back when you were younger, you hear them singing uh, this this shanty about sailing on the Midnight Rose. You go, Midnight Rose, that was Captain Rose's ship. And then you are struck in the <laughs> fucking chest with this long icicle spear. And you go flying off of Lucy. Oh, my God. And you, actually, go ahead and roll. Hey, wait, um, I understand what they're saying. <laughs> go ahead and roll acrobatics or athletics to see if you either fall into the ocean or land on another ice platform. Not the ocean, but. 12. You land and slide across a like small platform of ice, if you will, and just barely grab the edges. It sort of almost topples over. As one of your legs sinks in, you can't really feel th the necessary like temperature of it, but you can feel that it is extremely dangerous and cold and will probably... Uh, that's all you get from it, actually. You're s separate from Lucy and Gillian, and that is what happens. Next up is actually Chip's turn. I wave my hands in the air, <laughs> not being able to fucking see anything, and I go, please stop, please stop. I, I, I know the Black Horse Pirates. Please stop. Don't try to kill us. Please, I can't see. Okay. <laughs> Did you yell that in common or giant? I say that in common at first, and then I'll say it in giant again. What does that sound like? What does that sound like? What does that sound like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> if giants were real, you would be getting fucked up on the timeline right now. That's what it is. All right, go ahead and roll persuasion. 35. God damn. Bro, the natural 19. You scream this out back in giant. One of the one that's like circling near you goes, Oh, really? Well, what's his favorite color? <laughs> Yellow. We're friends of Roadster. Wrong. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you scream out yellow and you, you feel another one of those spears go right next to you. You can bed in the fucking. Uh, what do you want to do with your action or bonus action? No, nothing. I'm fine. I don't know what's happening. Can I hide? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Go ahead. Where? Okay. Where can you hide? I don't know. It's uh, everyone's vision is partially obscured. Twenty-eight. Okay, good to know. I get low. What does Lucy want to do on the first round? I think Lucy is gonna. Can Lucy jump onto one of the ships? That is a check. It's possible. Okay. Whoa, little sister, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, kill, kill. <laughs> <laughs> Just to look so concerned. Uh, go ahead and roll an athletics or acrobatics check. Uh, 22. I'm going to say roll a d4 to see which uh, ship you land on. Okay, here we go, everyone. That's a three. You land on the third ship. With Lucy, does Lucy do anything else? Is there like any giants on the ship? They're a bit obscure, but now that you're close enough, Lucy would see like like a skin complexion light blue and faded with this like really long, fluffy white beard, uh, piercing bright blue glowing eyes and the sort of like uh, scraggly mane, but they are, are wearing almost like barbaric sort of uh, clothing made from rags and they are very thin like very very lean um like really muscular but very lean and they have like wraps around their forearms and stuff and as soon as you land they're like bouncing up and down and they're still singing this shanty with the other ones but they notice and clock that you guys have landed on their ship lucy return this one to the sea and uh lucy is gonna run up and um charge him, but I think I'm gonna have Lucy take the shove action and try and fucking buck him <laughs> off the ship. It's kind of the same thing, right? Well, I think the the ram would knock him uh, uh, prone, and the shove would just bl like knock him back five feet. I want to shove him off the ship with Lucy. So with the attack with, action, with the, with the jumping leg. <laughs> 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 so he needs to make athletics uh, or acrobatics versus Lucy's athletics or acrobatics, which every, uh, as we've established. Um, uh, she gets a 20. He rolled a five. Simple enough, I say this one on ship number three gets pushed into the water on this round. Be gone! So once again, this uh, raging tornado, after you leap onto that ship, begins to go wild. Everybody make a strength save. 22. 13. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, I got a 13 too. Chip, <laughs> use my flash of genius on you. Same flashback. All the wind is right there. And I'm <laughs> holding on to the side of the ship. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I lied. I have Bless. I totally forgot. Uh, my 13 becomes a 16. Oh, me too. With Bless, with Flash of Genius, everybody passes this round. Uh, the next thing that you hear, Chip, 
you basically know that you've gotten their first question wrong. If you want to try and persuade them again, it'll have to be on your turn. Reconvince them that your friends, they're still singing in giant. Uh, this is their turn. They're going to roll to hit. And what's the next line? Sailing on the midnight rose. Sitting on a throne of gold. That's what you hear, Chip. Oh! 20 to hit on Chip. I don't Here. think they like you because you said that his favorite color was yellow. <laughs> Pea yellow. 24 for Gillian. I'll use shield um, just because I don't want to go flying off Lucy. So I bring up, uh, I actually, you know what? It's ice, right? So I'm going to fucking, I just put my hand at it and it just turns into fucking water and I give and I <laughs> tr- feed it out of the palm of my hand to Lucy. Okay, 21 on Jay. Uh, that does hit, yes. Okay, chip, uh, 14 points of piercing damage and make your strength safe. Lovely. I rolled 18 and 19. That's 21. Cool. You stay on the platform. Jay, 15 points of piercing damage. Make strength. Uh, I got 24. Uh, you're not blasted back anyway. That was their ships firing. Gillian, now that you're close enough, you see using all of their movement, uh, the, the creature you just pushed back, climbs back onto the ship. <laughs> Fucking rolled a natural 20. On what? On Lucy. No! 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 21 points of bludgeoning damage and one poof as they just fucking clock Lucy in the in the draw. Lucy, uh, saying no! Some, Little sister! Uh, what happens is Lucy, uh, I assume, dies. Lucy is immediately exploded um, into visceral flesh and blood, which shouldn't be possible. Um, <laughs> because she's supposed to be like a spirit. <laughs> and I drop to my knees and I say, Little sister, no! And then all of a sudden, you see as the flesh on the ground starts to twitch and twitch, and it starts crawling back into itself and re-stitching itself back together in an unholy abomination as Lucy had Death Ward from the mountain, and she is back with 1 HP! Zoom! This particular Yeti pirate sees all this. Oh, are you fucked up? Takes a second attack. <laughs> No! Does a 15 hit Lucy? Lucy's, <laughs> wait, Lucy's AC is 11, and every spell I cast on myself works on her. So Lucy has shield, so her AC is 16, 16, so it doesn't it hit! Doesn't hit. <laughs> yeah. Lucy's still fucking oh up. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Lucy, Lucy fucking catches it with her fifth leg. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, uh, this, this, this oh. Yeti pirate stops singing. Um, yeah, I would, I would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chip, you get your uh, second turn on the second round here, as you weren't surprised. I'll persuade again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do you say as you are trying to convince them that you actually do know the Black Rose Pirates? I don't know what his favorite color was, but I was on the boat. I was a kid. I don't know. They didn't tell me. We didn't talk about colors. You know, like, Arlen was on the boat. Uh, Dre Fair was on the boat. Uh, um, uh, Finn Tystrad was on the boat. Chip, you've never sold this softer than you're selling it now. Well, it's a lot of pressure right now, so it's making me nervous. <laughs> well, to tell him about where you're going. And why are you going there and all that stuff you've told us so much about? Oh, yeah, we're going to. Did you forget? <laughs> Fuck! Roll persuasion. <laughs> this is a 26. Didn't feel like a 26. <laughs> <laughs> In Giant. One of them on the far off ship, like, you know, across the, the this sort of, sort of tornado, says, yells out, Oh, that's common knowledge! <laughs> what was Captain Rose's favorite drink? Can I roll to know? If you want to try and recall, roll history. It's a 19. Memories start to flood back as you are like uh, trying, and and this is hard enough being uh, uh, sort of in this undead state. But because you have to hold on to these memories to stay chip anyways, you start to go back in this file folder of all the things uh, Chip as a child would maybe remember. And you remember Captain Rose giving his final uh, speech out towards the crew uh, and Shay pours in this like little mug a black tinted whiskey that she slid up the rail uh, as he grabbed it and held it up and gave a toast and you know that that is a black raspberry whiskey. Black raspberry whiskey! They uh, all immediately cheer. Ah! One Christian, two more! 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what are they saying, Jim? There's two more. Are they gonna keep attacking us? Yeah. I guess yeah. so. <laughs> Oh, Chip, do you have, you, wanna, you have an action or a bonus action if you want to do anything? There's nothing I can do. I can't see. Okay. Um, you can hide again, which will give them disadvantage. I, I stay hidden. Okay, Jay, it is your turn. Uh, you hear them screaming back and forth in this language you don't understand. What are they? What are they saying? They sound. You can tell though that these these uh these pirates are singing. But you can't tell what they're saying. What is that melody? What is? I can't do that again. <laughs> did that like two episodes ago? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do it a lot. <laughs> I feel like we do at least. What makes the most sense to me right now? Using my captain's ring to fire a cannon at one of the small things and just destroy the fucking ship. So I'm gonna do exactly that. They need to make a deck save. Uh, you gonna roll damage for the? Yeah, let me ship? roll it. Um. Oh my god, really good. Uh, 31, double for the structure, so 62. Uh, you hear the explosion as a super fucking large chunk uh, is taken out of one of the ships. Uh, we'll say that's ship number one. There's four of them. So just keep in mind that ship number one is taking 62 points of damage. And uh, as you get close enough to see the shit that you want to strike with the uh, captain's ring, you notice just with passive perception that... They are flying two black flags, or two flags. One of them is black, that has almost a sort of like skull of a of a of a mon not of a monster, but a kind of a a, mon a more monstrous skull that has this really sharp, long uh, mustache, and then a very pointy, long beard, and then like blue, bright blue eyes, sort of kind of reminiscent of a, a, like a Yeti Jolly Roger. And then you see above that is another flag that this ship is flying that you fucking just hit. It's a red flag with a white skull with a black rose sprouting out, out the top of the cranium. Oh shit, they're just flying that shit, all right. I'd like to move down towards ship, I think. Um, now that I've seen these flags, I'm gonna assume I didn't hear Chip yelling. <laughs> you have a really high passive perception, so I'm gonna say that you're able to get to Chip, right? yeah. Chip, um, it looks like these guys are flying the black rose. Yeah, I know. They asked me what his favorite color was, and I didn't register who he was, and so I just said panicked and said yellow. Why would you say that? <laughs> I don't know. Why okay, well, answer it this? again, but like answer right. Why the fuck would I know his favorite color? Would I know his favorite color? I don't, I don't know. think I know his favorite ship color. With him. I, I, the, the black. Okay, what's my favorite color, Jay? The, what? What's my favorite color? Uh, history check. <laughs> Doesn't come up as often as you fucking think, does it? I don't know. I mean, this dude's fucking had a pirate ship called the Black Rose, so maybe it's like red yeah, or yeah. black. We're pirates. We're pirates. We don't talk about our favorite colors and like where we want to go like on vacation. We're fucking pirates. Chip, I think your favorite color is red, honestly, but... It's, it's yellow. <laughs> Why would you say your favorite color when he asked you? <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Igneous. He is on his own little platform trying to keep his balance. Uh, go. What, what, what should we fucking do? Uh, I don't know, Igneous. What's your favorite color? Um, um, I'm not thinking of that right now. <laughs> we're in a battle. Uh, he's gonna, sounded like you were. You actually, you actually <laughs> hear Igneous uh, tries to stand up and then jump from this platform to one of the ships, rolls of two naturally, and then the next thing you hear, he falls into the water. I got this. <laughs> He'll be fine, right? I don't think he had that. Ship J, what do we want to do? Are we fighting these people or are we talking to these people? I think we fight until they talk. Uh, I can't fight anything I can't see. You're a negotiator. Get the answer right this time, okay? Until then, we're going to kill them. How, what if I don't know the fucking answer? <laughs> Keep guessing. Maybe you'll get it eventually. Next up is now... Gilly. Okay. Um, uh, Lucy is like laying, uh, like half cocked, just blocked this punch, but is still like nearly dead. Looks yeah, up. Yeah, Lucy's goes, got Lucy's got one inch. Big brother, I don't <laughs> want to go back. Back where? You know what? It doesn't matter, little sister. I'll protect you. I'm like. Fucking, I'm actually so bonded to this thing now. I don't want it to die. Um, whatever it is, is he? He's probably within five feet of us, huh? Because he tried to punch her. Um, yeah. Oh man, they don't understand what I'm saying either, because they're speaking another whole fucking language. You don't know. Yo, yo, whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, 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 hey! Let's not do all that. We got our guy over there. He's talking to your guys. 
what are we doing? <laughs> we're over here. We're shoving each other. We're punching each other. Let's let's hold off. Let's see how things go. Let's see whose favorite color. You know what? What's your favorite color? Mine's blue. And I see it in your eyes. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bro just raised it. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, roll persuasion. No disadvantage. Platonic fish riz. Um, so 14 and a 17. Oh my God, it's 23 with disadvantage. Okay, 23. They speak back. Uh, actually, it's understandable as common, but... It's it's not there at first. Like common isn't there. Common, your language you're speaking is not their first like natural language. So they speak back. They go, the names, Rebo, uh, favorite color red. Love fighting other pirates. You seem like the pirate type. Let's uh fucking duke it out while we uh see whether or not you are friend or foe. Chip. This seem like this guy's name is Rebo. Let's this have seems like some, some pretty, fun. pretty <laughs> low stakes fun. Okay, all right, all right. Hey, hey, Rebo, Rebo, Rebo. Just take it easy on my sister, all right? She she just got here. That thing is definitely a demon. I'm going no, to kill no, it. No, that's my sister. She's a goat. Do you know what a goat is? That is not a goat. <laughs> yes, it is. Just listen. Not lethal, bro. Not le non lethal. Man mano y mano. Let's do it. Right, with your persuasion, they will hit hit you and Lucy with. Non lethal just you and Lucy. All right, we're just gonna fucking duke it out. Um, I'm going to cast at fucking motherfucking fifth level because I love my little sister, Armor of Agathis. Uh, since it's a self spell, it works on her too. We immediately fucking deck up in like this ice armor that like peels itself off the ship and attaches to us, and we turn into one being like fucking Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how you fare against this. Ah, you know what? For flavor, I'll bonus action uh, use Leviathan's might to increase my size to large, so we turn into like a mech. Um, all right, that's that's what I do with my turn. The ship sort of like becomes uneven, sort of sinks deeper into the water on this side. Huge fucking Power Ranger ass covered in ice armor. Fucking Lucy's a part of it. It's awesome. I look like Radon from Elden Ring. <laughs> 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 Rebo started uh, singing again, but then like it slowly gets off key. The more and more you grow, <laughs> she gets bigger. Next up, once again, the sort of like crystals on top of each of their ships. Uh, the tornado begins to spin harshly. Go ahead, everybody, roll strength save. Uh, disadvantage for me, twenty-one. Lucy gets an eighteen. Got a twenty-four. Guys, where uh, where did Ignis go? I don't think he's very boy. You know exactly where Ignis went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Let me look for him. <laughs> Why are you so salty? Just keep answering their questions. Just maybe you can also ask them if the water, like, if it's, if it hurts or if it's safe to swim in. I'll bring it up. You're all sure-footed. That wind fucking flashback is actually saving the day for some reason, <laughs> and. Next up, you hear as these ships are firing these icicle spears, killing. You see the uh, sort of uh, monkish looking Yeti pirate. They don't do it in the same way you do when you cast a spell, but they also sort of like roll their shoulders forward. And as they do, this ice begins to kind of collect around them like a, a, a set of armor on their on their chest. 26 on Gillian from the ship across the way. Wait, wait hey, there ain't no, no non-lethal thing, right? You know what? I'll take your word for it. I'm sure they are. 17 on J. I'm tired of taking damage, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna cast, cast shield. Shield as well. Shield, boys! So all these icicles, they do hit, but then they get blocked by arcane shields. Now, Chip, it is your turn. Let's do this again. Persuasion. Yeah, go ahead and roll persuasion. That's 34. And giant. All right! You hear the one that's like closer to Gillian stop singing and yell out, second question! To prove your relationship and friendship with Captain Rules. Who was Captain Rules' favorite of his crew? Oh, shit. <laughs> History check. 14. A 14, you would know this information. Dude, who's his favorite? What the fuck? I don't know. Um, with a 14, I can give you a list of people that were on the ship. I want to say me, but I know it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Worst timeline. He didn't have one. 
He was annoyed by everyone equally. Annoyed? Okay, <laughs> okay bro. You, you, you're throwing. You're throwing. I don't remember this fucking guy. You're actually. This is actually you, a throw. I'm gonna start committing murder. So. I was. I was not trying to throw. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this guy so, out. He goes. He goes. He goes. Um. That's probably not true, but we'll accept it. <laughs> they all like fucking scream, uh, and they keep doing their little song. Next question, and then you know it keeps going. <laughs> do you want to do anything else? No. Um. Yeah. I mean, can I? see Igneous at all, like, looking where he tried to jump and failed. No. The water is dark. That's not great. So, like, and then, you know, I'm, like, the least equipped person to do <laughs> anything regarding strength. Fuck it. I'm going in after him. I'm gonna dive right on in. You dive in, and as soon as you plunge into the water, go ahead and make a con save. Um, 23. You feel this, like, dry... Um, cold once again, like a a very unnatural freezing as you dive in, but you're able to shake it off long enough to get deep enough to where you find Igneous, who has not been uh so fortunate with the cold, but he's like on his way up as you come in and you're able to get to him. On this turn, you don't have enough movement to get back yet, just because you're like flying and swimming are not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And he was sinking pretty deep. I'm still going to use. Can I see the surface at all? Yeah, I just roll perception. Uh, 21. I say normally you would not, but with the kind of glow of your golden eye, it f gives you a little bit of a brief glimpse to where you can see past the surface of the water. Okay, I'm going to vortex warp him up to, um, like if there's a platform I can, then I will do that. Yeah, I rolled a natural 20. I'll say you can do that. Ooh. He gets standing again on a platform. <sighs> He's like, 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 somewhat stiff, almost like a block of ice for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on his turn, he's unable to <laughs> do <back> anything. <laughs> no, he's unable to do anything. He's like frozen stiff. Okay, so he's out of the water. We're just waiting for Chip to do his thing. Uh, yeah, Chip screaming back and forth with giant. These guys are still throwing icicles at us. That's not super great. Is there a guy throwing an icicle at us uh, in the crow's nest of the boat I'm on? These icicles seem to be coming from like the ship, like the the sides of the ship. Oh, like the cannon. Okay. Yeah, they're not throwing it. That's that's why you're getting attacked by the person. Okay, got it. Can you swim? They're still singing. They go. They nod. Yeah, of course they can. Cool, cool. There's the there's the cold body of the water. Let's take it outside. <laughs> um, I'm gonna pull out <laughs> Destiny's, <all> outside. <laughs> Destiny's blade. Um, and I'm going to uh, just raise it above my head uh, and fucking <laughs> I'm gonna just jam it into the ship. Since I'm in this Leviathan form, I'm doing double damage to uh, objects and structures. Roll for damage. Yeah, I have to, do I have to roll to, to hit as well? I do have disadvantage. With the rules of structures, you just have to do a certain amount of damage to do damage. <laughs> Bat. <laughs> I smite. I smite okay. and I smite hard. And this, I smite and this, so and hard. And this ship hasn't taken uh, damage. But it's going to take some. And in fact, it's going to take... 76. It looks like you have uh, nearly split it in half to where like it's still holding on on one end and it sort of like splits open this way and the two sides begin to sort of drift apart, but it's not like completely- SECOND ATTACK! <laughs> okay, yeah, <you're> gonna... <laughs> gonna fucking Mihawk one piece this shit. I'm going to take my second attack. Gonna roll my damage and I'm never looking back. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna smite this as well. Uh, it takes another 48 damage. You completely split the hole in half, and now cool. the ship is All into right. two separate yeah. sections. I want to have, uh, then Lucy's on my turn, so I want to fucking basically cut the fucking ship in half, and then have Lucy, uh, use her fifth jumping leg to propel us back onto the mainland. Everywhere is water except for, like, little sections of ice platforms and the ships at the moment. Like okay, okay. Whatever's closest, whatever's close. if it's a ship closest, if it's a island closest, we're going there. Uh, it'll be, like, a small platform. Go ahead and roll acrobatics or athletics. Works for me. Lucy got a 19. Lucy clips the side and slips and both of you like sink into the water as you Lucy, try to make it. Lucy, no! Okay, I'm magical guidance. I'm, I'm magical guidancing that shit. So that means one reroll. This will need to be above a 10 or we're going down, baby. 19. So that brings her up to a 28. You think you're about to slip. You see this vision when you fall into the ocean and Lucy goes, Bleh. no, uh, uh, nah. and then like uh, uh, balances on this little icicle. Yes, disc. Lucy, defy destiny. Okay, defy. next stop. Up. Everybody, once more, make a strength save from the tornado. 
Actually, I'm underwater. Okay, you... Yeah, don't worry about that. We'll come back to that. I only got a 14, and Lucy got a 21. You get knocked off of Lucy, flung Ooh. into the ocean. Lucy! So, uh, go ahead and make a con save Gillian. Oh, God, I have disadvantage on these two. Bro, this is just getting ridiculous. <laughs> That's going to be um, 4 plus 8 plus 2, 14. Yeah, you become restrained inside the water as you begin to sink. Ooh, as your body begins to like, friends. you feel yourself freeze it's up as soon as you hit it. has been an excellent adventure. Um, Goodbye forever. Just because just it's going to happen anyways at the beginning of your turn, Jay also roll the same con save. 17 plus 3, 20. You're good on your turn. Chip, you hear... They don't have anyone to attack right now, besides Lucy. Um, <laughs> what did you say? I propel myself back out of the ocean, <laughs> like Jesus Christ out of his deathbed, and I block every single blow, and then do a thousand billion damage to them. I'm gonna say, Chip, you hear uh, in giant. All right, final question. Captain Rose had a mantra that he always ended every speech, every motivation with. Recite it here, and we'll know you are the true friend. All right, I'm gonna roll history. I don't know. I'm sure it was in the one shot, but the I'm one like shot was, was two years shot. ago. <laughs> yeah. And there's just no fucking way I'm gonna it's remember. two years ago for us, and like 19 years ago for Jim. This is 16. You try to remember, and... uh. We are back on the midnight roads, sailing down the pink-tinted Sakura Sakura Sea. And, Chip, you are running around the deck, being a little rambunctious, excitable kid, where nothing in the world has gone wrong or ever will go wrong, as you are surrounded by the greatest most uh, strongest, freest uh, family and people in the world. You see Arlen is like helping set up uh, the, these tables and getting pushed around by Finn. Dre, who is at the, at the rails with Jug. And, and there's this like ongoing banquet in the middle of setting up a banquet as you guys are sailing back home. And what, what would little Chip be looking for and doing here at this moment. I'm gonna touch all the food. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're disgusting. Bro. You're you're a freak. <laughs> yeah. You run around and as it is for Chip to both annoy not only Elizabeth uh, or Lizzie and 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 Shay the chef. You go around and just contaminate plague all of the food that they are both trying to prepare together. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> and then you get pushed and then chased out by Lizzie uh, in this sort of like small sibling dynamic. And as you are running with like these fucking sausages in your hand, you <laughs> come and you see uh, Rose come out of his quarters and everyone's attention just whoosh, locks at this captain who is larger than life. And while isn't directly your caretaker, has been this beacon of like just humanity like this is where you want it like this is where everybody wants to be before they die right and he stands and leads all these people that are just as strong and yet he is their captain you look at you look up and he gives this big speech and at the end of the speech everyone alongside the captain chants this mantra that they basically all like have tattooed to their hearts everybody uh including arlen um and, and Finn and Dre and Captain Rose and, and Rufus and Wheezy F Baby who's around uh who usually scrubs the deck. Everybody raises their glass all around you, Chip, in this like almost slow motion cinematic moment as it splashes uh in the sun, the sunset just sort of shines in on everyone. They all yell, Be Merry! Be loud! Be and this whole cheer around you just erupts and <laughs> we come back and you're blinded 
undead, shaken, cold in the middle of this fight, this <laughs> random ambush with these these fucking giant, uh, you don't even you know, you know they're speaking giant, you know what they look like, they're just fucking quizzing you on, on the history of the Black Rose that you maybe have long locked away in your memory uh, after going through this this life of, of haunted trauma. And uh, they ask you, what was this mantra to know as a true fan? What do you say? Be merry, be loud, be pirates. All of the uh, the Yeti pirates cheer, uh, and the uh, swirl of this tornado stops, and it clears and returns to that very like subtle slow fall, and everyone's vision goes back to normal. Killian and Jay are both in the water. Uh, <laughs> I'll say in this moment as well, Chip, just from yelling that out and having this moment when you're taken back to a, a peaceful time, your vision at the same time clears up and you see around you these oh my God. four <laughs> ships who are, who are shouting and cheering. You see the flags that they're flying. Um, you see Igneous uh, unlocks, combat is over. Uh, and two of the Yeti pirates jump into the water, grab both Jay and Gillian, <laughs> bring them back up uh, onto their ships. Everyone is sort of in this moment of Chaos turned into uh, excitement as they kind of welcome you aboard on the on on one of their ships, not the one that is broken. They're kind of like two ships down. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we kind of fucked up two of the ships. All of them have uh, white, like bushy white beards, despite uh, one of them having sort of a more like I guess feminine, muscular build. Uh, but they all have these beards. One of them super lanky and lithe. Uh, another one is is pretty tall and bulky. Another one is like uh, just as strong, but uh, slightly more uh, round and, and, and rotund and like, like jolly looking uh, and the four of them sort of look at you welcoming you as friends now this they are, they have stopped the fight oh that was easy hi I don't know what you did Chip but you did it I can't believe you did it okay <laughs> thank god I'm we not... Turski this is Floski this is Rebo and this is Mike <laughs> we are longtime friends and protectors of the Black Rose hideout here on Onoa country. So it's a hideout. More or less. All right, well, I'm I'm Chip. This is Gillian, Jay, and Igneous. You're forgetting someone, Chip. <sighs> I don't want to. I don't want to. You're forgetting wanna... my little sister. <laughs> I don't remember her name, so I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not, I don't... Oh, you seem to remember a lot of things today. Think back. Think back. I put my hands on his temples and he has a flashback. He remembers Lucy being born. Her beautiful fifth <laughs> fifth leg coming into existence. And then there's Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I was uh, a boy when I was with the pirates. The Black Rose pirates. Right. Well, Black Rose boy. Welcome aboard. Chip is cool, but all right. Uh, I got a... A message that somebody had left something here for me. <sighs> they look at each other, sort of nod, smile. Ten long years awaiting someone, friend of the Black Rose, to arrive. We'll take you. Oh, okay. You would have died trying to climb the mountain by your own. Are uh, we already almost dead? <laughs> but fortunately, there is no climbing needed. And then they begin to sort of sail uh, down this lake, this cliffside lake, uh, as it's slowly, you see one of them like, <sighs> like does this long, uh, sort, of, sort of a cone of coal type breath where uh, the lake begins to sort of freeze back over as they sail across. And uh, they come to the edge and one of them uh, departs or gets off the ship and then pushes a like almost seamless entryway uh, of the rock into the mountain and then slides it over so the ships can continue in uh and as you do you sort of enter emerge into this hidden cave inside of this ice sculpture of a mountain and that's where we in the session whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, fuck. Ooh, all right oh fuck yeah right at the door i'm i want to ask these people questions next time oh i, I want to know some shit I want to know some shit. Thanks so much for listening to that episode. And now a big thank you to all of our high roller patrons. Accent, Mountain's Thunder Thighs, Only Senpai, Persisted Crib, Tristan Lynn Swenson, Zachary Comstock, Charm of the Bard, 
Abby, Katie, and Elliot. Aaron Moment. Agar Steeljaw. Alistair Susie. Alderic. Amber Curry. Anko. A Pirate with Gout. Apple. Aqua the Kaizoku. Asteria Nix. Baka Seven. Bazozo. Beans. Beebness. Big Blue Bear Boy. Big Man Christian. Bisley's Burger. Bosco. Bree Lee. Brodrick Motif. Buttery Toast. Cal's The Folded Pizza Zone. Captain Lafayette and crew. Sarazaku. Certified Cringe Fail Loser Boy. Charlie Darling Songbird. Cheesus Bree, but scary. Chillin Vibe Strider. Kojo Wo. Colin the Bard. Cornier Comet. Cranky Martin. Crobins. Chrysanus Sin. Daxi Boy. Deathclaw. Derpy Tricks. Deviator. Elise the Washed Up Bard. Elvish Cyborg. Emperor Pangu 69. EMT3. Epicris. Erica Moon. Unio Lune. X Pugaloo. Falauchash. F Bomb 2. Final Fan. Finn Rua. Fly Guy. Funny Hats Incorporated. Goose. Gillian's biggest fan. Goodest Lad. Harry Bow. Mmm, burger. Hollow Headed. I am in your walls. I'm butt flusting. I'm just a burb. Insomnia Draws. It's Albert. It's CFR 3SH. It's Kafir 3 Jade's 2604. Jason the Fricker. Jay Newell. Jonathan Bleak. Jordan Darlin. JRWI Enjoyer. Cadis Betis. Kelly the Raccoon. Kev Senpai. Curvy Wafro. Kitsune. Cribwin. Leftover Rice. Lemon Leviathan. Lightning Deathbringer. Luke Ranbu. Man Made Imp. Me Forever Mate. Me Phobia Man. Mitchell Iverson. Mithril Gear 417. Mr. Nacho. Mr. C. Goo Black Whisperer. Mr. Anderson 1078. Narwhal Shellfish. Non X Lodal. Nova Sink. Obligatory References. Oh, Kerberos. Pippin the Paladin. Nemono Ultra Microscopic Sicilla Volcanios Volcanoiosis. Thanks for your pledge. Pupper in a spacesuit. Quinn Gibson. Robert Gangwer. Ruth the Banana Duck. Riker Kurotu. Sammy Bao the Second. Sandy 007. Stumyums. Scamper. Sorcerer Punk. Soul of a Pep. Spin Yaks. This is just dude. Sweet Cacti. Sylve Soul. Tane Lambert, the snazziest. Teeny Ghosts. That One Furry. That One Person. The Awesome Man. The Godly King. The Oval Lord. Thomas Pierce. Tintunu. Titan Storm. To be determined, the D&D group. Unstable Chaotic Cracker. Vapor. Walfie. Water Lenny. Wild James. William B. Wumbo. Willistrator. Raytheon. Zerberus. You will rue the day. Zenith Scythe. And Zero Codex. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. And I will roll you around later when you least expect it and when you feel the most safe.